Hello everybody and welcome to Pretty Good Gaming. My name is Gareth Evans, I am joined by Mr. Henry Cooper. How are you, sir? I'm not so bad. I had a bit of an ordeal getting here today with trains because I'm an idiot, but I'm here now. Idiots and trains do not mix. They do but, not. Um, you made it. So we are here today to talk about cyberpunk and the possibility of multiplayer because there's been some happenings, let's say, in the news. So firstly, we're going to hit you with the facts, exactly what's happened and what's been said. We're going to flesh out with a little bit of context and then we're going to raise some talking points and discussion towards the end of the video. So first off, what the hell has happened? Well, Digital Scapes, they have a LinkedIn page and it says the following. We are currently in cooperation with CD Projekt Red. We're working on Cyberpunk 2077. So, this is news. CD Projekt are having help working on the game Cyberpunk 2077. There's a quote here from Mikhail Novakovsky, a Senior Vice President of Business Development at CD Projekt Red. He said, Cyberpunk 2077 is our most ambitious project to date and we work hard every day to make it a creative and technological achievement. The Digital Scapes team brings aboard a lot of talent, experience and technical knowledge and I'm very confident our long-term cooperation will add plenty to the game and Martin Chady, studio head of Digital Escapes, had this to say, we are both excited and honored to work with CD Projekt Red. Their incredible, creative and accomplished team of developers have been publishing narrative-driven role-playing games to unprecedented levels. We look forward to helping them create the very best video games on the planet. So that's all that was said and that's where everything that you're hearing and seeing in the news is, is coming from. Now, first off, who the hell are Digital Escapes? That's the first question, right? So what we've learned about them is, is that they are based in Vancouver, founded by industry veterans from Bioware, Radical Entertainment, and Relic. Experience. A lot of yeah. experience in the team there. They work for some very big teams. It says, it specializes in AAA multiplayer console and PC game development, de development tool creation, asset production, and cloud computing. Previously worked on games like Company of Heroes, Warhammer 40,000, Dying Light, and Proto type worked with Techland and Dying Light and um, Techland worked on the single player portion and Digital Scapes worked on the multiplayer portion and it says on their LinkedIn page that the size of the company is between one and ten employees which doesn't sound significant no. however and um, what is significant is that they are pretty much multiplayer specialists right yeah so that's why everyone's talking about cyberpunk multiplayer and what this means for cyberpunk I played a lot of the uh, original Dying Light. We've got a sequel coming up next year, and we've got the Bad Blood kind of spin-off Battle Royale version going live now. But I never played the multiplayer of the first one. And I think I would have if I'd have had other players, like in my friendship group, who were playing it. I think it's that kind of Left 4 Dead cooperative zombie experience, yes. right? And if they're trying to do a cooperative multiplayer-based experience in Cyberpunk, I think that could be really awesome. Mm. Rather than, you know, your matchmaking lobbies with Team Deathmatch or anything like that. Because I don't think that's what people really yeah. want. And it doesn't work in an RPG kind of um, yeah. setup. Well, that is the conversation that we're going we're to have, right? It's like what type of multiplayer, we're, if they're having cyber, multiplayer in Cyberpunk, which is strongly indicated. In fact, it's pretty much confirmed that it is. Um, when interviewed by... Eurogamer in June on the topic of multiplayer. CD Projekt Quest designer Patrick Mills had the following to say. We have multiplayer in R&D, research and development. But the game we're shipping to you, the game we're bringing to you is the single player experience. That's really what we're concentrating on now, the single player RPG experience. That's what we want to nail down before we start looking at any of these other things. A Eurogamer continued, is Cyberpunk 27 a purely single player game? Patrick Mill said, yes, it is. That's categorical and yeah. quite confusing, right? Mm. Cyberpunk 27 is purely single player game. But that might be a big clue as to how multiplayer is being implemented in Cyberpunk 2077. More on that in just a second. Eurogamer continued, so maybe multiplayer will come post-launch, and Patrick Mills said, maybe, no promises, nothing at launch. At launch, we're concentrating on the single-player game. That's what we want to give to you. So, you know, he was very categorical there. Yeah, it's definitely a single-player game in research and development on multiplayer and it will come after launch, if at all. If at all. I think they've got the best approach to this because they're very much like, we are doing single player, that's what this game is, and we're considering the concept of multiplayer and how it would work. And I think that's definitely the best way to go because multiplayer, a lot of people like it, and there's a lot of money to be made in it as well from a business perspective. Yeah. So they're obviously going to want to try and bring that in. It's going to be successful, but they want to focus on nailing the single player like first time, get it right, yes. make a quality, quality game like they've done with The Witcher, Yes. which is obviously one game of the year for everything, pretty much. Yes, yes. So they're definitely looking to be doing that sort of thing again. They've got a lot of ambition with this game yeah. in kind of scope of the world and what you can do in it. And adding multiplayer to that 
seems like, I don't know, it might just be a bit much. Yes. Uh, so this raises the question, what type of multiplayer is it going to be? Yeah, of Because there's a, there's a few ways to implement it, right? He's implying here that this is going to be a completely separate multiplayer entity. Uh, the likes of which you get with the Rockstar game, GTA 5, and the upcoming Red Dead Redemption 2, for example. Completely separate entity, almost a separate game, if you like. You've got a single player experience, no multiplayer um, players at all. And then you've got your uh, multiplayer experience where you, you go in, it's just a multiplayer world and that's how it is. And your single player character is completely separate to your multiplayer character and you level them up separately. That's what he's implying there. Yeah. Um, that is completely separate multiplayer experience because um, launching uh, Cyberpunk 2077 as a single player game and then retrospectively adding in multiplayer in like this seamless yeah. way, which is the other way you could do it, it sounds a bit of a technical nightmare, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. Especially even on kind of a basic level, um, like interfaces and stuff. And you need to have a, a lobby and having a fully single player game, like running, loading, all the different bits going on at once, all these cogs uh, spinning and spinning. But trying to put in a multiplayer element that's going to fit nicely and slot in existing in the same world with multiple players, because it's unlikely to just be like one core player, like one host and then one match maker, I guess. Yeah. That's going to be very difficult to kind of merge seamlessly. So I think a disconnected multiplayer is probably the best way to go Yeah. from a practical standpoint. But I think a seamless approach could be really interesting if they did it right. So I think that's something they I would prefer that they save to like a sequel um, to bring in maybe a Dark Souls or Bloodborne-esque multiplayer mm -hmm. where you've got your world with your story and then you can invite other people in. And Cyberpunk's doing a really good job of integrating every little thing into their lore. So you could have it like, oh, these are guys we've met through the the net so you can connect with other net runners that could be like the name for them in canon so i think that could be a really interesting approach but i just i don't know how well it's going to land in yeah. integrating it into such a solid self-contained single player experience yeah and that is the question that's the technological question maybe that's what digital escapes are here to try and the problem that they're trying to solve. A seamless multiplayer sounds like something that you have to go with at launch. It's probably not easy to implement after the fact, after you've already released your game. And seamless multiplayer, obviously, the likes of which you see in Dark Souls or Monster Hunter World, which we saw recently in Watch Dogs is one of the other examples of which we're featuring it and you touched on it there, dropping in and out of multiplayer. You're working on your single player campaign, you need help, you fire a, a flare or whatever it is yeah. that you do in Monster Hunter World, and then you get somebody else to help you with your yeah, um, right. With your quest. How are they going to um, do that if they produce these two entities separately? It's going to be really, really difficult, that's for sure. So it that points to the fact that multiplayer is going to be a completely separate entity. However, in the past, CD Projekt Red got a grant from the Polish government to the tune of seven million US dollars. The uh, government. The yeah, government of all bloody in places. In 2016. Uh, specifically, the N. CBR, National Center for Research of Development. This is the Polish government grant, handing out grants. To, to a video future. game company. Yeah. Um, like it's incredible. Part of the CD Projekt Red's proposals focused on four things. City creation, cinematic feel, animation excellent, and seamless multiplayer. That was very specific yeah. in their proposal. So they got a grant for seven million US dollars. Part of that was specifically for seamless multiplayer. And the quote from um, the proposal was, comprehensive technology enables the creation of unique gameplay for many players, taking into account the search of opponents, session management, replication facilities, and support of a variety of game modes, along with a unique set of dedicated tools. There's nothing that specifically points to the fact that they're using this money on Cyberpunk 2077. No. We don't know that they, they're not working on something completely separate. However, it would be a little bit of a stretch to say that, that they're not looking at this yeah, right. for Cyberpunk 2077. And um, here's a quote from Adam Kaczynski, president of CD Projekt Red, um, and he said in a statement at the time, developing video games is a hyper innovative activity, but also one which carries sub substantial financial risks involving continuous R&D work and requires much experimentation and prototyping along the way. So that was back in 2016, okay? And that Patrick Mills echoed that sentiment yeah. pretty much to Eurogamer this year. Maybe they don't even know what kind of multiplayer they're gonna implement at this time. They're still researching it, they're still developing it. They don't even know how it's gonna work. Maybe that's a possibility, right? Yeah, we still don't even have a launch date yet. Not even a window. I mean, it's been... Uh, theorized that it might come out in 2019. Well, there was it, that rumor recently. Yeah, this mystery tweet from the, the Turkish um, publisher, yeah. publisher, yeah, that was then mysteriously deleted. <laughs> I think 2019 does sound uh, promising, especially fourth quarter, kind of winter time. Yeah. 
But even then, from the level of ambition they've got for this title, even without the idea of multiplayer, mm-hmm. it's still going to be up against the marks. They're going to be under a lot of pressure. I mean, I imagine the folks over at CDPR right now, they're really in like full gear, bringing everything together, working on every little thing. Because we don't even have a proper game yet, not even a playable one. Yeah. Because the um, gameplay footage that was leaked, they made it very, very clear several times with the narrator saying that this is a work in progress. Yeah. It's not quite finished yet. Yeah. Things are almost definitely going to change yes. at least a little bit. Although when I was watching that demo, I'd be like, man, bring just, this out yeah, now. I will play now. that it's right now. I it don't care, so I don't care how far it's got to go. It's a lot better than some of the shite that gets published these days. Yeah, right. Just stuck, stuck in early access. In early access. Online, <laughs> nonsense. That is pretty much where we are. We're speculating here, obviously. Yeah. We, don't know, we don't know how it's going to be implemented. We, we kind of can glean from what they're saying that there will be some sort of multiplayer in some sort of capacity. At so, some point. <laughs> at some point. But it raises a few other questions. If there is multiplayer, how they're going to monetize it. Now we know you know, these monetization methods in multiplayer games can be very shitty, let's say yeah. that. Although this is CD Projekt Red and they leave group to others. So they, they do. We, we, we can kind of rest assured that this isn't the reason they're doing multiplayer. Mm. A lot of these big publishers and game developers just squeeze multiplayer in there as an excuse yeah. to serve microtransactions on loot yeah. boxes or whatever. Some people, they don't even bother with the multiplayer. They just throw microtransactions anyway yeah. in single player games. <laughs> they, uh, they just don't care. <laughs> which is totally shady and totally bad, but we've got faith in CD Projekt. Yeah, they had a hidden uh, letter at the end of their, their trailer. Was, I think it was this year, this year's E3, regarding... Uh, DLC expansions and being DRM free and they and it just said expect nothing less so we're gonna get DLC like proper free story DLC. based DLC yeah free DLC at that yeah. uh, no DRM and then microtransactions they said in a single player role playing game are you nuts now yeah. that is the right attitude to have no one wants them and people are like <laughs> oh yeah but, but, but they're optional right yeah so's not turning on the game but I do that so I'm already <laughs> fucking paying you <laughs> Are you nuts? The sentiment there carries a lot of weight with the community, and that, and that's why I love about CD Projekt Red. Is this whole thing is why they're so well loved. You, people are like CD Projekt Red; they're just another big company. No, they no, they're not no, just they're another just, company. Yeah. They're like us, you and me. They talk like we do. They call out bullshit when they see it. FuckDRM.com is one of the initiatives by GOG, which is run by CD Projekt. Yeah, obviously they've got this um, hashtag #FuckDRM campaign going yep. on right now. And who else but CD Projekt Red to raise a light to this bullshit practice? DRM-free gaming is where it's at. And you probably get Cyberpunk DRM-free as well, obviously, that's what, yeah. that's what this quote says. Um, but that's what we think. Do we even want multiplayer? <laughs> yeah, do, do we that's really want it soiling our lovely little story-driven game? Do we even want multiplayer? Does it even need multiplayer? As, a, as another couple of questions. And I'm, we're not going to jump into that deeply right here. Hopefully, they integrate multiplayer in a way where you can just ignore multiplayer completely. Yeah. Just, just switch just it carry off. Carry on with your single player, nice and driven story yeah, game, and it will all be fine. Would you play a cyberpunk MMO? That's a question you wrote on here. Yeah, I think it, that could be interesting. Not like right now. I think possibly in the future go the way of Elder Scrolls or Fallout, yeah. pushing into MMO territory. Because I think with their whole very personal, it's your character, it's your adventure. I think that could work really well in, in an MMO kind of environment. Especially with the way they're doing classes or not doing classes. Because yeah. they've got this fluid skill stats system which can then change. And that, again, works in canon and in lore mm-hmm. because you've got all these attachments and stuff. And if you want to be a stealthy guy, you put a thing that will dampen your footsteps or something. But then you can then detach that and then have something that makes your trigger finger faster. So you've got better reflexes and you can fire faster. So I think stuff like that could work in an MMO environment. But that's definitely years away, like yeah. a long time away. And I think that's good. I don't want it now. Yeah. I want Cyberpunk 2077, single player, story, Give it to me now. Not 2019, not 2020. I want it this week. I want it to blow Red Dead out of the water because I'm really excited for that, but I don't care. Yeah. Competition is always good. So that's what we think about Cyberpunk 2077 and the possibility of multiplayer and a bit of speculation as to how they're going to implement it based on this news that's come out overnight. So let us know what you guys think down in the comments section of this video. Anything that we've touched on, any points that we've raised any conversation topics that you want to contribute to, throw them down in the comments because we're always there checking out what you've got to say. So thanks for watching this video. Hit the bell on the video if you want to see more content a bit like this. We'll be back again tomorrow with another video. So on behalf of Henry and I, we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye.